for the platform to give me a go ahead. So, dosto, main hoon aapka dost, aapka host, Ketsu Sawad ka host, Puneet Bhatnaga. Aur aaj mujhe bhoat khushi hai ki mere saath, इस स्क्रीन पर है कुछ ऐसे चमकते सितारे और जैसा कि आज के हमारा हमारा टॉपिक है आंखों के तारे चमकते सितारे क्योंकि हम जो गेसुवाइट्स हैं ये हमारे बच्चे हैं ये हमारी अगली पीढ़ी है और मैं जानता हूँ कि आज की पीढ़ी के जो बच्चे हैं आज की पीढ़ी के जो युवा हैं वो शायद उनसे बहुत आगे जाएं अभी तो सिर्फ शुरुआत और ऐसे बहुत सारे युवा गेसु की दुनिया में होंगे लेकिन आज बाल दिवस की पूर्व संध्या पर हालांकि ये बच्चे नहीं है तो बच्चे बच्चे नहीं है लेकिन शायद हम सबके लिए फिर भी बच्चे हैं हमने सोचा क्यों ना ये मौका इस मौके पर उठा लिया जाए और हमारे जो युवा अचीवर से उनसे बात की जाए तो पार साक्षी वसुंधरा अद्वैत गेसु संवाद में आप सबका बहुत 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 स्वागत सबसे पहले हम एक काम करते हैं हम आप सबका परिचय देते हैं एक एक करके सबसे बात करते हैं पार्क अपने बारे में कुछ बताएंगे गेसु के हम सब दोस्तों को हेलो माय नेम इज़ पार्थ मैं अभी करंटली आयन मैन कोचिंग करता हूँ एंड एज वेल एज आई एम एन आयन मैन एथलीट सो एंड अदर देन दैट अभी मेरा स्ट्रेंथ एंड कंडीशनिंग का कोर्स हुआ है सो आई एम सर्टिफाइड स्ट्रेंथ एंड कंडीशनिंग कोच फॉर एथलीट्स हु प्ले डिफरेंट स्पोर्ट्स और फॉर पीपल हु आर इंजर्ड और या फिर जिनकी बहुत ज़्यादा सेलेंट्री लाइफ होती है उनका ट्रेनिंग करके how to improve their general fitness or posture and also athletic uh, specific athletic performance kya baat great great baat and sakshi now let's move to you and uh namaste sabhi ko uh ah. first of all thank you for need sir hum sabko yahan invite karne ke liye aur children's day aur special banane ke liye do hum children nahi hai but thank you so much Uh, मेरा नाम साक्षी इंगोले है मैं मिलिन इंगोले जो 1983 बैच पास आउट है उनकी डॉटर हूँ मैं करंटली उज्जैन में रहती हूँ और उज्जैन में मेरा एक स्टूडियो है रॉक पम्प स्टूडियो के नाम से वहाँ हम लोग म्यूज़िक वीडियोस बनाते हैं हम लोग गवर्नमेंट प्रोजेक्ट्स करते हैं और okay. हमारा एक डिजिटल मार्केटिंग सोल्यूशन भी है को फाउंडर हूँ और फटाफट भी हो जाता है वसुंधरा ज्यादा ही लंबा पड़ता है थैंक यू सर फॉर हैविंग अस हियर और इतना इनकरेजिंग इंट्रोडक्शन देने के लिए um i am vasundhra jain i am daughter of uh, mr atul jain uh, 1988 batch mm-hmm. i started my career as an economics consultant in london at a consulting oh. firm aur mm-hmm. fir uh, main india shift hui mujhe us se bahut hi patriotic feelings aati thi and i started my own venture here aur ab hum researchers ko support services provide karte hain mainly uk mein and uh, very recently i have uh, pub- I, my book has been published so नाम पागे है और आई एम सन ऑफ मिस्टर आशुतोष पागे जो आपके जीईसीयू में एक 1989 के बैच के थे करेंटली मतलब मैं इंटरनेशनल लेवल स्विमर हूँ एंड करेंटली मैं यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ फ्लोरिडा में अपना बैचलर्स इन स्पोर्ट्स मैनेजमेंट परस्यू कर रहा हूँ अभी मैं फाइनल ईयर में हूँ एंड मैं अभी मीटिंग वहीं से ज्वाइन कर रहा हूँ क्या बात सो आई वॉट पीपल फ्रॉम उज्जैन पीपल फ्रॉम पुणे एंड फ्रॉम फ्लोरिडा 
that's great and many people who have joined from all over the country and many people who to listen to this dosto main aap logo ko batau ki jesu samvad aur jesu ki duniya hai kabhi kabhi lagta hua ki hamare pita ji ko jail mein pad aur chota sa shehar hai lekin jesu ke illuminati 50 deshon mein paaye gaye so i i think that's fantastic और जैसू के एलोमनाई जो है वो बड़ी बड़ी कंपनियां जो है टेस्ला है गूगल है लिंकडिन है एप्पल है से लेकर कई इंटरप्रेन जो है वो जैसू से निकले सो इट्स अ ग्रेट ग्रेट प्लेस टू बी और आई एम श्योर कि हम लोग शायद हम लोगों ने आईआईटी से शुरू नहीं किया आईआईएम से शुरू नहीं किया लेकिन जैसू का कुछ ऐसा कल्चर है एक स्ट्रीट स्मार्ट कल्चर है and i'm sure ki usme se bahut kuch aap logo mein bhi aaya ho and main aap logo ki kahani sunne ke liye bahut 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 usko aur hamare sab dost bahut usko to vasu main shuru kaun se karta hu ki ye batao ye batao you are an entrepreneur entrepreneur and an author and an author okay to apni entrepreneurship journey ke bare mein Um, बहुत ही अप एंड डाउन रही है जितनी भी रही है अभी तक की okay. थोड़ी जर्नी um, पहले स, uh, पहले एक्चुअली मैंने जो पहला वेंचर स्टार्ट किया था वो कोविड के दौरान हमने उसको क्लोज कर दिया उससे पहले बहुत ही अच्छा जा रहा था um, हमने एक प्रोटोटाइप बनाया था एक रोबोट का जो रिमोटली एजुकेशन के लिए यूज करा जा सकता था तो एक टीचर कुड स्टे इन अ मेट्रो इन अ गुड इन अ सिटी लाइक उज्जैन और वो रिमोट एरियाज में रोबोट को कंट्रोल करके लाइव क्लासेस ले सकती थी okay. और स्टूडेंट्स का और हमने जब उसकी लाइफ टेस्टिंग करी तो स्टूडेंट्स का रिस्पांस भी बहुत अच्छा था और कोविड के दौरान लर्निंग uh, लैंडस्केप ही इतना बदल गया कि अनफॉर्चुनेटली वी थॉट कि बोट आगे but, निकल गई और टीचर जो है बैठे हैं, बैठे हैं। हैं। उन्हें टीचर के दिखेंगे तो वो कनेक्टिविटी लाइक ही है तो रोबोट के अंदर टीचर की आत्मा आ जाए इसलिए शायद उसकी इतनी जरूरत ना बचे ना बचे एग्जैक्टली अगर सोचो की ना तो उसके लिए कुछ और बहुत सारे एप्लीकेशन होंगे सर क्या चीज उम्र क्या एज थर्टी लॉजिकल I I I I I I I I have 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 a a a surprise. surprise. Oh, <laughs> wow. So, <laughs> I, I, I have also gone for the 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 book. 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 And I'm, I'm surprised by the kind of kind of research you know. you know. okay. idea Yeah. So, um, when I was studying economics, मुझे लगता था की 
अभी हम इकोनॉमिक्स पढ़ रहे हैं तो लॉजिक लगा रहे हैं फ्रेमवर्क्स बना रहे हैं मैथमेटिक्स यूज कर रहे हैं और वैसे रियल लाइफ में हम जाते तो हम इमोशंस को भी ऑब्वियसली यूज करते ही हैं क्या खाना है क्या पढ़ना है कहाँ पे वर्क करना है तो लाइफ इतनी एक एक्सट्रीम में नहीं है कि सिर्फ हम दिमाग ही यूज करते हैं या सिर्फ हम हार्ट ही यूज करते हैं और अगर हम रिलेशनशिप्स की बात करें तो हमारे पॉपुलर मीडिया में या कल्चर में जो बातें होती हैं यूजुअली इमोशंस को रिलेटेड लेके ज्यादा होती हैं बॉलीवुड में या मैगजीन आर्टिकल्स में इट्स ऑल अबाउट इमोशंस तो मुझे लगता था अगर हम लॉजिक को यूज करके हमारी ह्यूमन सिचुएशंस को देखें तो हमें क्या इससे दिखाई देगा और विल इट गिव अस सम इंसाइट्स तो मैंने यही प्रोसेस को यूज किया बोला की ऑपोजिट चीजें साथ में आ रही है तो मुझे लगता है एम पी के लोगों को तो ऑपोजिट की आदत ही है हम कुछ एक्सप्लेन करते हैं तो हम बोलते हैं ये तो भयंकर अच्छा है और यहाँ से एमपी के बाहर के लोगों को शायद समझ नहीं आया पर हमें पता है कि भयंकर अच्छा है का बिल्कुल कुछ मीनिंग है वो कुछ बहुत स्पेसिफिक चीज है ये ये बात सही है मैं मैं जब मुंबई में शुरू आया था और एडवर्टाइजिंग में आया और मैं किसी से बोलता और क्या खतरनाक है खतरनाक अच्छा होता कोशिश करके ना करें तो जैसे इकोनॉमिक्स में एक कॉन्सेप्ट है मियर एक्सपोजर का कि अगर हमारे ब्रेन ने किसी चीज को पहले देखा है तो हमारी ऑटोमेटिक प्रेफरेंस उसके लिए ज्यादा होती है और इसका यही मतलब नहीं की फेमिलियरिटी के कारण अगर हमारा ब्रेन किसी चीज को स्प्लिट सेकंड के लिए भी देखता है तो हमने एक स्प्लिट सेकंड के लिए किसी की फोटो को देखा और हमें रियलाइज भी नहीं हुआ किसकी फोटो को देखा है हम जब भी उस इंसान को वापस से एनकाउंटर करेंगे हमारी ऑटोमेटिक प्रेफरेंस उसके लिए ज्यादा है तो एक हमारी एवरीडे सिचुएशन में अगर हम ऐसे सोचे की हम एक नई जगह जाते हैं हमें कनेक्शन बनाने हैं लोगों से मिलना है तो जस्ट बींग प्रेजेंट जस्ट बींग अवेलेबल सोशली लिटिल विजिबल ऐसा होने से ऑटोमेटिकली लोगों की इंक्लिनेशन एक दूसरे की तरफ बढ़ जाती है होना ही चाहिए स्पिरिचुअली एक्चुअली ऐसा लोगों के साथ करके देखें जैसे हम इन्हें इकोनॉमिक्स में इंसेंटिव बोलते हैं कि हम किसी को कुछ दे रहे हैं कि होपफुली आपको कुछ मिल रहा है तो आप इसके रिटर्न में कुछ करें तो अगर एक एनजीओ फॉर एग्जांपल फंड रेज कर रहा है और उनने एक फंड रेज का फॉर्म सबको दे रहे हैं कि आप भर दीजिए और साथ में वो बोल उन दो ऑप्शन है या तो वो बोल सकते हैं आप फॉर्म भरिए हमें डोनेशन दीजिए और हम आपको कुछ विल गिव यू सम कैंडीज या हम आपको कुछ गिफ्ट देंगे वर्सेज वो सबको कुछ फ्री में पहले दे दें तो राइट right पब्लिक में मॉल में स्टॉल है वो एनजीओ सबको कुछ फ्री में दे टॉफीज कैंडीज और फिर बोले कि अच्छा इफ यू आर इंटरेस्टेड यू कैन अप्लाई एंड डोनेट समथिंग तो ओवरऑल डोनेशन प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ पीपल डूइंग समथिंग गुड बैक इज मोर अगर किसी के लिए हमने बिना किसी कंडीशन के बिना कुछ एक्सपेक्ट किए किया हो तो तो या बेसिकली अच्छा करें मुझे याद आ रहा है एक साइकोलॉजी में भी में में एक कॉन्सेप्ट होता है जिसको हम रेसिप्रोसिटी आई थिंक द सेम थिंग 
और वो है हरे रामा हरे रामा इंटरनेशनल वो लोग वो लोग कई जगह खड़े होते हैं खड़े फूल दे फूल दे और आपके हाथ में जब फूल आ जाता है उसके बाद बाद वो कहते हैं अगर आपको डोनेशन देना हो तो देना एंड आई थिंक दैट्स अ ग्रेट टेक्निक ग्रेट टेक्निक वाओ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग बट आई एम जस्ट थिंकिंग पीपल स्टार्ट यूजिंग इट फॉर रोमांटिक रिलेशनशिप रिलेशनशिप फॉर रिलेशन बहुत सारे लोग हैं जिनके दिमाग में आइडिया था ऑलरेडी आ रहा है तो सो थैंक्स फॉर इनलाइट फॉर इनलाइट यूनिवर्सिटीज की सो I'll focus on that and try to increase that. Great. So uh, now let us move to Parth. Parth. Thank you, Vasu. Hi, Parth. Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 So Parth, you are an Iron Man. I am damn, damn impressed. Thank you. And uh, especially. most of us heard about marathons and ultra marathons but i think when this guy milin soman went for iron man then suddenly everybody woke up to this thing what is iron man? yeah so can you first tell us what iron man is because many people may not be knowing about it. so iron man is basically a challenge that involves long distance swimming cycling and running Okay. and so and the challenge itself and the how demanding that challenge is makes the name iron man because it requires a lot of training and conditioning and you know a whole process to be able to be fit enough to do an iron man so spark you are saying one single person has to do swimming cycling yeah. and run all in a go all in a go even the transition time from swimming to cycling and cycling to running is all counted in your timing so okay so it's yeah. not like you take a break and then you do something i mean you have the option to take a break but everybody wants to do it on the go and in okay. the fastest time possible so okay. i mean okay. give their best at that race okay so so this is one of the toughest uh, sports yeah yeah it is one of the toughest one day events there are also different triathlons that are more difficult like the ultra man but that is a three day event okay. and the distances are much longer but as a single day event iron man can be the most challenging event because there is so much that an iron man can offer say it can be hot on that day or it can be super windy or it can be very elevated or the route can can be very you know uphill and downhill so every ma- iron man has its own uh, say challenge to offer and yeah i mean in that way it can be all things summed up it can be one of the toughest single day events okay so tell me so what kind of distances you did in iron so as of me when it comes to me i have done the half iron man yet the full iron man has 4 km of swimming 180 km of cycling and 42 km of running so that is a full iron man and that's when you get the full iron man you know label mm-hmm. but i have done the half iron man so i have done the exact competition with half distances so 2 km swimming 90 km cy- uh, cycling and 21 running okay. okay great so now tell me one thing we all know your father okay okay and looking at him knowing him i could never imagine that his son is going to be an iron man okay so so tell me what prompted you to i think it all is kind of i think it all started in college uh, my college first year i was into electronics and telecommunication engineering mm-hmm. and uh, i think i like when i i mean i always since high school days i had some affinity for running and you know long distance running mm-hmm. and when my college started is also when i started going to the gym uh, mm-hmm. a very renowned gym in pune by the name of multifit 
so multifit had a uh, really top tier coaches a few of them who had done the ironman already and people who were very well connected and you know experienced in the fitness industry in general so as i was in college i used to visit the gym regardless i mean i used to go there and you know be around these coaches and people and i also interned under them for like a couple of months on my summer break so had a very good insight on how gyms and fitness industry work and uh, i had also had a good insight about how training has been done for the ironman and you know what kind of process goes into it what kind of you know mindset goes into be being, being able to visualize an ironman yeah. so i just got everything from there just by spending time and showing up at the gym and uh, i think as my engineering was about to get over my my interests were pretty clear and yeah. i did not want to continue with the technical entire technical industry yeah. and so i chose and i also saw the financial aspects and how monet i mean how well monet monetize this whole industry is and how you know how it's growing because people always want a bigger challenge now people are not just sticking to marathons marathons happen every other sunday now in pune or in a lot of cities in pune or uh, i mean in india but uh, triathlons are certainly the next challenge for people because it's intimidating that you cycle so much you swim so much you run so much so as so there's a lot of curiosity about what triathlon is and that's why a lot of new people are coming into the industry inquiring about the sport and you know training for the sport and at least you know developing some kind of yeah. affinity for that sport so it's yeah. it's growing like it's it's a sunrise sport i'd say oh, and oh. Uh, it's like it in the 80s or 90s how it just boomed it's really? it's one of those, oh, yeah it's just oh, one oh, of those oh. so now now that's a news to me and especially when you say monetization and yeah so all engineers who are listening to this talk right now yeah i mean be, one of the i mean be the aware part, be aware that uh, running and cycling is much better than just in, in fact the fastest uh, fastest iron man in india is from iit bombay he's an iit bombay alumnus he's an engineer okay. okay so there is a plenty of engineers in this industry plenty of doctors plenty of people who have done like something or the other so tell me one thing Life. tell me because you are saying now iitians are doing it and many engineers are here so tell me does having a engineering mindset uh, helps sorry sorry does having a engineering kind of mindset it helps in this kind of um i mean uh, i mean as i mean i think the mindsets of engineers only from year to year have has changed like you know uh, like uh, i think engineers now at least have the tendency of getting everything done last minute and sub you know everything will get sorted and you know it's mm-hmm. it's more about i mean engineering at least now depending on i mean seeing how the generation is on and how the students are generally and even i was a part of it uh, like there is no uh, i mean unless you're a very like unless you're a prodigy most of the students do not have a vision of you know a vision towards their academic responsibilities it's like last minute assignments ho jayenge or last minute exam ke liye padh ke ho jayega that's at least majority of how engineers are in this day and age mm-hmm. so uh i mean i i wouldn't say that uh, engineering mindset helped me with iron man but iron man is more say long distance and it's it's a very solo sport so you know you don't you can't be or talking to anybody while you're swimming or when you're alone out there on the highway while you're cycling so there is no uh say there is no sense of say group groupism when you're actually training it's most say lonely so it's more of you dealing with your own thoughts and you know you dealing with the pain of training or you trying to be better and figuring things out on your own i mean you can always talk to better coaches and you know you can always talk to better athletes it can help you develop as an athlete but uh, it doesn't resonate with how engineering at least works in this oh, okay okay, yeah. okay great great now tell me so this is a tough sport and you got it too give us give us a glimpse how you prepare for this kind of you know, scenario um so i mean as basic as it sounds swimming cycling running it's not just that it also a whole lot of process also goes into how you structure your training how smartly your training because all i mean there's a theory that one less session is always better than one more session so okay. i mean it's all it's all based on how well you are structuring your sessions how 
how often and what in what volume and what intensity you're training when you have control over these parameters is when you can actually you know come back to bed feeling you know okay but there are also and it's not very hard to cross that barrier and go and overtrain that can you know give you chronic fatigue or you know just you know symptoms yeah, like so that sentence was really very insightful it's better to have one less session than one more session yeah so can you can you focus there can you zoom in into this and Uh, so i mean for a lot of athletes out there they are training and they're always you know finding for that motivation to train and you know sometimes what happens is that uh, even when the body is saying no sometimes you know it's hard to acknowledge the fact that the body is saying no you always want to train or you always want to make one person you know something better about your training mm-hmm. so you know it's and it's tricky because sometimes it works and sometimes it does not because sometimes you your body actually or you in all overall need that session but sometimes it may not go away so there is always that risk factor there is always that factor which i mean one extra training session may also make you see you know maybe you should have rested or and if you don't feel, I, i mean if you continue feeling the same after continuing training post you know 10 15 minutes then you know that you know training is not meant for today because if you go and train probably the first 10 15 minutes will give you the answer whether you are completely ready or whether you should have taken the decision to train yeah, that's that's great insight because it's not a single day thing it's every day it's an every day mm-hmm. process so mm-hmm. yeah so, but tell me when you are preparing for this kind of competition how many hours you put into training so every I, day it depends uh, on the lifestyle of comp- Com- completely there are people who want to complete the iron man challenge in just the cut off time there are people who want to complete the iron man challenge in you know a faster time so they if somebody is really busy then they take years to train for an iron man so that their body is completely ready but for somebody who is relatively free can train 8 to 9 months in 8 to 9 months and be you know fit enough for the iron man but uh, if if say you have a mid level busy schedule then i'd say one to one i mean one and a half to two hours on weekdays and weekends usually go for the longer training sessions because that's when you have the time to be tired as well mm-hmm. on weekdays you don't have the time to be tired and resting all day so that's how it works and considering yeah. that uh, iron man is a very financially demanding sport it is i mean uh, it's like uh, a lot of people who are doing iron mans and you know back to back you know month after month they usually they are very well settled in life they're doing you know pretty fine you know you won't see a lot of students doing an iron man or you will not see a lot of say hustlers you know people from the age of 21 to 29 doing an iron man 25 okay. say yeah so it is more for 30 plus so yeah. you should have the stamina you should have the patience and you should have your pocket full yeah okay. yeah okay okay but many of many engineers would fit into this yeah and gesu has a gesu is dcu basically if you all know i hope you all know now uh, we call it gesu government engineering college yeah itself. and gesu has a good uh, fitness community we have got some ultra marathoners cyclists swimmers and i think you can train them or even coach them so i i hope some after listening to you and after knowing that someone is there to guide them i think some of some of us would yeah would like to do iron man sure sure so can can you show some you must have won some medals you must have yeah i have a couple of my medals i've done two iron man so far my yeah. third iron man was supposed to be today but i'm injured so i'm home oh So, but here goes my two iron man. Hey, great, 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 great man. So that's that's superb. And I would someday would like to meet you in person, Par. Yeah. Because it will be it will be great to shake hands with an iron man. Okay. <laughs> and and I hope you would do your full iron man. Not soon. whenever it is right for you after yeah. hearing you i would say this and so friends anyone who would like to be guided who wants to become an iron man can i share your number with them first that's the question yeah. 
sure thing okay okay so you all can connect with him or rajiv apte who is his father from 1992 batch so great part uh, thank you great part and we are very very inspired we are very inspired and especially that thing is still ringing in my head the monetization because i i never i never thought that uh, this kind of athletic domain would give the kind of money which uh, perhaps an engineer can't make so so that's a good that's a good knock on the head for us all, all of us thank you for that right. okay and so we i'll come back to you again but let me shift to Sakshi. Sakshi. Hi. So, <laughs> hi. Hi. So you are in Jain, and yes. you are also an entrepreneur, YouTuber, uh, which is a very in thing to do. And and I think all four of you, basically all four four of four of you are not into traditional careers, which is really interesting. And if you want. You can include me also, because I was also an engineer, but then got into writing and creative direction and things like that. So, so friends, all engineers, we are all like non-engineers here talking to each other. But good learning, so bear with us. Sachi, <laughs> Sachi, tell me. Yes, sir. Tell me, Ujjain, what should I say? और वहां रह के कोई यूट्यूबिंग कर रहा है और सक्सेसफुल हो रहा है तो ये थोड़ा सा कभी कभी सुनने में अजीब लगता है बट जैसे कि सब मिथ होते हैं तुमने उसको तोड़ दिया तो लेट्स स्टार्ट फ्रॉम हियर कि ये ये कीड़ा कहां से लगा सो बेसिकली आई वाज परसुइंग माय करियर इनटू चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंसी सो आई वाज अ सीए फाइनल स्टूडेंट बट uh, ऐसा मजा नहीं आ रहा था इतना पढ़ के मतलब सुबह चार बजे कोचिंग जाओ ऑफिस अटेंड करो ऑफिस के बाद वापस कोचिंग जाओ नौ साढ़े नौ बजे घर आओ और फिर घर आके होमवर्क करो और फिर सो जाओ और फिर वापस सुबह उठो और सेम साइकिल में वापस रन करते रहो तो so, मजा नहीं आ रहा था देन माई फादर एज आई आई थिंक यू नो हिम सो ही इज ऑलवेज अप फॉर डूइंग समथिंग आउट ऑफ द बॉक्स so he said ki chalo kuch karke dekho so that time i was also learning uh, guitar to okay. ujjain mein already ek existing music school tha jiska naam rock farm hai jis brand ke under hum log kaam karte hain to maine ek din aise hi apna problem yahan ke jo founder hai mainly unse share kiya ki matlab main bahut zyada bore ho chuki so he said ki chalo we are having a project uh, jisme hum log ek story likhna hai and i think you are a good storyteller उनको ऐसा लगा उस टाइम पे आई एम नॉट अ गुड स्टोरी टेलर बट ही थॉट दैट आई एम अ गुड स्टोरी टेलर तो ही सेड कि यू शुड राइट अ स्टोरी अबाउट फॉर दैट म्यूजिक वीडियो तो मैंने बोला चलो ठीक है देन ही गेव मी क्लाइंट का नंबर ही सेड कि अब जाओ उनको सुनाओ ये स्टोरी एंड क्लाइंट उस टाइम पे कन्विंस हो गया एंड देन इसके बाद मैंने डायरेक्शन किया उस वीडियो का और फिर धीरे 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 करते करते मतलब वी गॉट वी स्टार्ट गेटिंग सक्सेस इन टू वट वी वर डूइंग और उस टाइम पे हमारी एज ग्रुप में ये सब चीजें कोई कर नहीं रहा था and uh, i think in 2017 we got silver play button for our youtube channel so we make uh, music videos for ujjain based girl only her name is shubhangi dave and she is a fantastic singer hum uske music videos banate hain currently she has also achieved 100k mark on her instagram channel as well so we have been promoting a lot of artists who are based in ujjain and ujjain ki hai ujjain mein rehti hai yeah, right. correct okay, correct okay, okay, okay. so we are promoting talent of ujjain so we started as a music school so basically rock farm started as a music school mm-hmm. then we started our youtube channel and then we started our recording studio so i'm st- sitting in my recording studio so yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we started our video editing uh, vertical and then we started digital marketing and now we are one stop solution for every digital problem okay. so we have been providing our services to a lot of corporates मैं 
I don't know exact number, but uh, we have promoted almost fifty to hundred artists okay. in the span that we have worked. I mean, अभी तक हम जितने लोगों के लिए काम कर चुके थे आप fifty to hundred. To your knowledge, हम लोग के पास बॉम्बे से क्लाइंट आते हैं. हमारे पास सिडनी से भी क्लाइंट आए हैं. Okay, <laughs> so you are pitching to us. Great. <laughs> <laughs> So okay, I do okay. digital marketing, so I'm pitching here as well. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So, so that's great. Now tell me, मुझे एक छोटा सा curiosity है तुमने कहा कि उन्होंने हमको silver button दिया. Yeah. So in so, 2017 we got silver play button. क्या होता है? And, so I would uh, uh, love to show it to everyone. So this yeah, is the so silver much. play uh, button that we uh, got from YouTube. Uh, okay. So it has uh, the name written here, Rock Farm Records. It is for mm-hmm. our recording label. So under uh, Rock Farm Record, we uh, publish videos of various artists. So I take care of direction part, and uh, we have a team who work with us. So we have seventeen people in our team, and mm-hmm. we have our branch office in Pune as well. And this okay. uh, month we'll be traveling to Pune for certain shoots as well. <laughs> oh, क्या बात? Great, yeah. great. So. उज्जैन में रह के आप अच्छा काम कर रही हो हजारों फॉलोअर्स से यूट्यूब के चैनल पर इतना एक लाइव रिपोर्ट है कि उज्जैन के कलाकारों को प्रमोट कर रहे हो पर उज्जैन के बाहर के भी कलाकार जैसे तुमने कहा कई लोग बॉम्बे से आते हैं या सिडनी से भी आए हैं हां दिल्ली से भी आए हैं दिल्ली से भी आए हैं इन दोनों से फ्रीक्वेंटली आते रहते हैं ये सब सिंगर ही होते हैं या मेरे जैसा कोई स्पीकर भी आ सकता है so uh, not necessary हम लोगों के पास speakers भी है मतलब हम लोग speakers को भी motivate करते हैं हम उनके motivational videos बनाते हैं पर फिर जो वो videos रहते हैं वो उनके खुद के particular channel पे जाते हैं तो हम उनको उसमें भी help करने के लिए मतलब उसमें भी grow करने के लिए help करते हैं और आपका YouTube channel singers के लिए correct so we have recording label so if I have to become your client then I have to start singing not necessary but we can yeah obviously you can help me with a lot of things <laughs> इंगोलेसर उज्जैन के कलाकारों को मौका मिलना चाहिए ज्यादा से ज्यादा कई बार क्या होता है कलाकार तो अच्छे होते हैं लेकिन वो इतना चमकते नहीं है क्योंकि उनके बारे में दुनिया को पता नहीं चलता कहते ना जंगल में मोर ना चाहिए किसी एंड आई थिंक आज की तारीख में यूट्यूब की दुनिया में इंस्टाग्राम की दुनिया में मोर कहीं भी ना चाहिए दुनिया भर के लोग उसको देख सकते हैं तो आप ज्यादा से ज्यादा मोर ना चाहे और ज्यादा से ज्यादा सब्सक्राइबर पाए और और बहुत सारा बिजनेस आपको मिले ऐसी शुभकामनाएं एंड गेसू परिवार की तरफ से करता हूं थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच फॉर बीइंग विद अस बट आई थिंक पीपल वुड लाइक टू आस्क क्वेश्चन But before that, मैं जाऊंगा आपके दोस्त सबवे पार्टी के पास जो फ्लोरिडा से हमारे साथ जुड़े हैं and सबवे uh, again many of us know you because you were there on the news clips you were there on the TV screens and we have seen you in the final of Commonwealth Games uh, long distance running so first of all congratulations. Thank you, thank you so much, and uh, thank you for uh, hosting this at such a time where I can. Hey, it's a, it's our it's our pleasure that you <laughs> said yes because you are sitting there in different time zones, and you no, met. I, I had to. I mean, I I love being part of this, and I have and personally met you as well. So and interestingly, your father, your well. father, your father was also in Jaipur somewhere. Yeah, and. Vasu's father was also in Gajesh. Okay, good, good, good. But in your case, when Ashutosh came, the whole subject was Advaita Padi. 
so <laughs> so we know your story because that day we spoke about how parenting is very important for yeah for a sports person for somebody who wants to compete how people around him must come together and do a lot of things because yeah in india we don't have that kind of infrastructure but today i would like to love to hear the story from the monsters one so advait yeah. uh, tell me why you chose to be a long distance runner because in india people generally avoid those kind of scenarios um i'm not entirely sure but um, i think it's because as a young kid that was the thing i was good at okay. and it became a way for me to you know showcase my talent and it's something that i enjoyed to do um so, i learned how to swim at around age 7 okay. um, and i think i was really into like long distance cycling I used to live okay. in abu dhabi and okay. there's a place called cornish along the coast where okay. my mummy and papa they would just go for exercise uh they would take me and my sister and mm. i would cycle so i think that's where i got some long distance uh like little bit of training inside uh, okay. when i was so young so your your, so your sister yeah i remember it now your sister was also swimming before you your yeah. eldest sister was swimming yeah. that was also a good thing for you you just it came naturally to you so I mean, yeah i had to follow her she is my uh, you know biggest inspiration probably oh, okay. uh, first person i ever looked up to and started swimming because of her great 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 so then you also shifted places so you were in middle east and then you came to india yeah and uh, so so tell us from the very beginning i think uh, you and more than you your family decided that this guy is going to be a champion a swimming champion so how was your childhood different from other kids who do all the tests and exams and wait for marks uh yeah so uh, i would just first of all like to mention that when we started swimming it was never to you know be great at the sport it was just to uh, learn the skill and okay. you know know that you know okay. and mainly for fitness swimming is a okay. good sport okay. and enrolling your kids into any sport is uh, something this is one of the best things a parent can do so i'm glad that my parents uh, decided that and with mm-hmm. swimming um then we had to move to india uh, when i was around 8 or 9 years old mm-hmm. and again my parents made it a point that whenever we find a new school for him um let's try to continue his uh, passion for swimming mm-hmm. and we were we moved to indore uh, we did not have a lot of pools where uh, they would have swimming practices and regular training mm-hmm. uh, but luckily we found shishukan swimming academy um mm-hmm. situated in the shishukan international school Yeah. and they were happy to you know take us there uh train me for uh, the whole year while i was a kid so that's where it all started and um i started from like little age group competitions to school competitions mm-hmm. uh as i grew older like it's like climbing the stairs of okay. each level uh so that's when swimming became like okay this is what i want to do and i was never pressurized by and any one from the outside not my parents not my coaches ki tumhe yahi karna hai life mein so so then with internal so then when you when the penny drop when you thought oh i want to be a swimmer um yeah i i look back and i think about this at this happened at different uh, points in my career but i feel uh, some of those key moments were maybe winning my first national uh, medal uh that's when i realized that okay i can you know break through being one of the better swimmers in my state and actually achieve something at the national level mm-hmm. the same goes for uh, winning my first international medal for india mm-hmm. um and it was a silver but it was still uh something huge for me because you could move outside of swimming and being good in india and doing that outside of india mm-hmm. um and then i feel like every little step I was important in its own way in giving me that confidence 
um, making me believe in the support that I have, the opportunity I have. So every every little achievement was important. Okay. So so basically, when you started winning competition, then then it came to you that perhaps I am good enough. Perhaps I should do more. Or, or perhaps I should try to. Yeah. Do more. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So tell us something about the competition that you have won because we are all curious about. <laughs> uh yeah sure so some of my biggest uh wins uh, recently just like last month i raced at the national games which is our country's multi sport mm-hmm. event uh mm-hmm. held once every four years i mm-hmm. won three gold medals yeah. two silvers and broke three meet records Great. um other than that some international meets that i've been part of and won medals at are uh, singapore open 2019 and 18 when i won three golds and a silver 2018 i won one gold and one silver uh asian age group championships this was back in 2017 i was only 16 at the time but uh, i won one gold one silver and one bronze and south asian age group championships a silver and a bronze these are some um, meets that i won medals for india uh, there are some meets probably bigger ones that i haven't won medals but mm-hmm. it is it's a, an honor to represent our country so those are yeah, the it's a, it's a great honor. games yeah asian great games uh, the commonwealth games last year and mm-hmm. we're looking forward to the asian games next year and i'm sure that you will represent india in olympics too yes that's the uh, aim <laughs> okay. and uh, and like you said it's an honor to represent your country uh, It, it seems that uh, you are wearing some kind of uniform for yeah so i saw that like, with the other speakers uh mm-hmm. sandra had her book uh part had, had his medals right mm-hmm. now i'm in the us i don't really have much uh, to show so yeah. i thought i'll just wear this uh, india jersey for yeah, the congress games it's fantastic <laughs> it's fantastic and <laughs> And congratulate! I want to congratulate again and again because I am following you for a long time because your father Ashutosh is my batchman, and yeah. so so I in a sense follow you very very closely, and mm-hmm. I know many details, many details. Yeah. So tell me one thing now, for this kind of competitions, and remember it is like some of the toughest competitions because. For a fraction of second, yeah, you lose or you win. Exactly. So tell, yeah. So tell me what kind of practice sessions you do, what kind of preparation you do for these competitions, and so first you tell me what kind of preparations happens. Uh, yeah. So it is in a way very similar to what Parth uh, explained. Mm-hmm. The only thing is, I've only seen it with full-time, you know, swimmers. uh you're not really balancing that with uh, a professional side because uh, i've been young in the sport so uh yeah the thing is and i only swim i don't have to cycle and run uh but swim training it's like you have to train twice a day mm-hmm. and each practice is about 2 hours oh. um, and you do that 10 times a week okay. and on top of that you have uh three weight sessions to dry land sessions so if my math is right you would be doing 20 hours in the pool and about about 5 hours outside of the pool just to get yourself ready in a week okay. and you do that for depending on your event uh, because i'm distance um i have i, I require a longer time uh, period to get ready for my races and this could be about 6 months so mm-hmm. it's not all intense you start off a pretty easy light intensity and as the season goes the first few weeks are going to be easy you ramp it up with the intensity you hit a period in your season where it's super intense that's where you build most of your capacity there are tough sessions uh, each swim practice i'm swimming anywhere between 7000 to 10000 meters and you have to do that 10 times a week so it's pretty intense So um and then before your races you bring it down you taper and that's when you're fresh and ready to compete. 
that's what we do before our big competitions. So, four hours of swimming every day. I know I, I did some swimming in Ujjain's current town. Yeah. <laughs> and I know it's so tough. It's so tough to do two, three, four, five laps. And you are here doing it for four hours and then doing wet training. And I believe you also have to study because you are there on a scholarship. Yeah. I currently, I'm a student athlete. So, all of that becomes a little harder to manage because you have classes every day, assignments, upcoming exams to study for. But it's, it's worth it, you know, it will prepare you, not just for your swimming career, but like for life ahead. So it's yeah. important. So, but one more thing I would like to ask you, because swimming is not just swimming, you also have to have a speed. Yeah. You also have to have a speed. And so the weight, and your muscle structure and your weight and everything would have an impact on how fast or how well you can swim. So tell me something about yeah. nutrition. How do you manage that? Yeah, nutrition is, is big in any sport. Uh, mm. Any sport if you want to you know, reach a higher level and the same goes for swimming. Um, a good thing, like if you're in India, you have the best uh, food items. You know, diet-wise, India has healthier food compared to anywhere else Are you sure? So that's Are you what sure? I, because, because I, I think Because people say Indians so. eat very spicy food and uh, it's not healthy. made at home. You have your okay. dal, chawal, roti, sabzi. Okay. That is some of the best, you know, staple foods you can have. Um, mm -hmm. And if it's simple, it's not fried and cooked outside. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what I grew up, uh, you know, eating. And that's what I think my body is suited to have. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then when I moved to the U.S., it was a challenge, nutrition at first, uh, because over here, things are different. Processed foods are much more easily available. Um, but I had to get in touch with nutritionists. We have some on the team over here. They help you like find what works for you. What works for me might not work for another swimmer who's from a different country or has eaten different food all his life. So it is important to look at you know, what you, you require, what your body requires, and it's yeah. essential for your training. Um, no, I think no. it's like, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I have a question, and I'm very curious, so might be I'm interrupting, but I'm very, very curious. Yeah, good, no. Look, you started and you won some awards, some competitions, and you thought I'm good enough to go and take swimming as a career, as a, to take it full time. Come in getting committed to it. But now you are in Florida and your school, I believe, is is one of the best schools for swimming training. And, Correct, yeah. and every day when you are when you are doing your exercises, you are swimming with Olympic champions. Is that correct? That is correct, yeah. Multiple correct. Olympic champions that so now, now tell me how it feels when you are with people who are like training. At the same level, or beating you in spite of you doing your best, how it feels to work at that level, we all would like to understand because most yeah. of us are never in that situation. Yeah, uh, I can, like, the best way I can uh, explain it is like having a coin, it has two sides, two mm -hmm. opposite sides. You know, one way it can, it can be very difficult. To train with the very best every day because um, there's a reason they're the best. You are uh, you're definitely learning from them, uh, but it can become very demotivating sometimes um, if you see yourself getting beaten every day, yeah. uh, especially coming from a background where you have achieved something. So that's like a, the difficult side. But on the flip side, you have something that can be like the biggest motivation. That even though you might not be as good as them, you are really not, learning not from today. the best. Maybe, best in the maybe best. you are not good yeah. as them today, but tomorrow learning the same role. Exactly. You can go and get yeah, them. and like slowly, step by step, you are gathering things from them. Mm -hmm. You're getting closer to what their level is. And mm -hmm. it's like looking back, you see how far you've come um, mm -hmm. start as a kid who really did not know how to swim and now you're able to at least have this opportunity of swimming 
with the best in in the world so that's like the motivation side so it's mm-hmm. always you have as an athlete i feel like every athlete goes through a period of setback and they need to and they need help from outside to look at the motivation side yeah and right. pick themselves up go so for the next target what i am learning from you is that emotional management is also very important and absolutely right, yeah and right now i know ashutosh rupesh they are all working with you all the time but there you are all alone and you have to manage yeah the emotional side too so, yeah yeah absolutely and so great it's so inspiring to hear you advait <laughs> in first you. person today and and i'm sure all of us the whole gesu world is so happy that you are achieving things all of you all of you are doing your best in your own way i have one more question to to you advait in that question is now because you are competing at the highest level and you are with indian continent in asian games commonwealth games so you must be friends with some of the best athletes in this country yeah in india yes yes absolutely <laughs> okay okay uh, can you name some of them can you share some stories what happens in those those pavilions uh, behind yeah. behind the main tracks uh yeah absolutely uh well this commonwealth games was a little different because all even though team india had multiple sports um di- different uh, athletes from different sports were not staying together uh mm-hmm. some athletes from team india were at a different place uh some was at a different place stuff like that and they had multiple villages mm-hmm. uh so we don't really have that many interactions but uh, the few times that i did i for example lakshya sain who's our badminton champion uh, i went to the youth olympics with him 3 years ago and now i met him at the commonwealth games and he's just doing so well in badminton but at the same time he's just so humble like he was 3 years ago he's very shy shy kid and i love talking to him then so i i met a lot of uh, young athletes that i met at uh, with the team at the youth olympics so jeremy ralte the weightlifter uh, some players in hockey they all won medals at the commonwealth uh, they're all doing so well and then some athletes uh, who are more senior that's uh, the first time i met them so shri shankar murali uh, abdullah abubakar both uh, long jump and triple jump champions i was actually roommates with one of them for one okay. night when okay. we had to go and meet uh, the prime minister and that's my interview. Ah, you also met so, Prime Minister. Yeah. Yeah, the one thing I absolutely admire about all these athletes um is how down to earth they are. Uh because you see them achieving things. You see them perform, but no one really gets to see what's uh, behind. No, that's uh, why you don't I'm... see uh, anything apart from the athlete. So it's it's good to see the person side, the human person. side of them. Human side. And, and... yeah and it must be very inspiring you can learn so much because there are so many achievers all around you and yeah and here i would also like to add one thing for all our viewers also because when he's saying that they're all young and they have won awards at commonwealth i i want to underline one thing that swimming is even now is in a very nascent stage in india and advait is one of the person pioneers who is trying to break through those limits okay so and the work that adway and his father are doing uh, along with other swimming community members and i i can tell you that swimming community because all of them are working together and i'm sure adway very soon in two, few years indian swimmers will be winning the awards because right now we are in the finals right now we yeah. are in the finals maybe by the next olympic i would say somebody from india would be winning it yeah yeah absolutely and like i want said, that somebody uh, and i want that somebody to be good that's why yes I mean, we will give it that, that's our what best shot we, all of us pray and we wish absolutely and you are already proud of it you are already proud thank you 
and I'm especially proud that I have met you in person. Uh, and again and again, we would meet. Uh, perhaps I would have met uh, Vasu also with them in our Golden Jubilee festivals. So Parth and Sachi, I would like to meet you too. Now I am doing one something different here. Uh, we learned so much from you guys, and I would tell you, all of you guys are so mature, so mature. The, the way you are talking, the way you are explaining things, it seems that the young generation is very mature, very balanced, especially the achievers, I would say. Okay. Now let us have the session differently. Rather than me, if you guys want to ask any question to each other, why don't you shoot the question at fellow panelists? Okay, I have a question. Uh, okay. Firstly, it was really nice to listen to everybody and hear their story. It's very inspiring. Um, mm -hmm. So my question is to both Advait and Parth. Um, you guys have made so much progress in sports. And you've probably visited Ujjain and seen how, how the infrastructure is, what the training is. So if, there, if you had to give any suggestions to young kids and their families here, what would it be? What should they look for? What are their strengths? And what are the things they need to um, perhaps take outside help from? Um, if I can go first. See, so uh, as a child, like when you're, you know, when you got like, you know, as parents, I mean, as a child, when you go to a school, uh, you know, your potential is totally untapped, I feel. And uh, there are so many things that, you know, you can enroll for, like, you know, if school has enough amenities, I mean, that's where the main part lies. You know, a lot of schools do not have that grassroots level level. I mean, India in general, the sport industry does not have grassroots level development. And when I say that, it's specific to, like, you know, from school level coaching in sports, or even not just sports, but a lot of, say, uh, practical-related jobs or a lot of, <laughs> say, you know, other things. So I feel that when you enroll in a school, there's a lot of exposure being given to you and you have ample time to figure out what you need. So as as and when your results coming out and, you know, they're coming out and you can get... Just give me a second. I'm sorry. Yeah, not a problem. Yeah, so I was saying that, uh, you know, as a child gets the exposure, I feel there's a lot of productive work being done into learning something new because as children, uh, I, I'm sure that everybody is aware that children are very quick graspers and a certain environment being projected on them will definitely have some something to contribute to their mindset. Something that you've done at the age of five or six will play a big role on how you're thinking about you know, your general sporting circumstances at the age of, say, 15, 16, or, you know, as you grow older, it keeps developing. So I feel that, uh, yeah, so there's a lot to learn. And there is no shortage on how many things can be done with sports and, uh, say, swimming, or there is cycling, running, there is, there's a lot of other sports, you know, badminton, India has a lot of progress being shown in uh, wrestling. Uh, I mean, not just cricket. So, you know, there are so many sports that are coming up and there are already a lot of sports management industries being put into place so that grassroots level agencies or grassroots level people can help manage, or manage and create an athlete out of a, out of a kid who's just attending school, but he's good at something, he or she. So, um, yeah, I think that's what I think. Um, yeah, yeah. Path is absolutely right. Um, the only thing I would add to that is uh, this goes for parents. Uh, a, a coach once told me that, you know, the best thing a parent can do is enroll their kid into sport. And it's not for what result he's going to achieve for himself, the family or the country. Um, you would do that because sport is like the best insurance you can have. Um, I'm talking in terms of how healthy the child is going to be. It's going to really help them long term. And enroll your kids, uh, like I said, not for the results, 
but for what sport teaches you, you know, the values like you have hard work, you have discipline, teamwork, and there's countless, countless values like that. Um, the child, you know, they go to school and they learn their academic side, but these are sport gives you the, these uh, life, real life experiences firsthand, which goes a long way in like whatever you decide to do, even after sports. So and India is doing a lot better you know, as sports persons in India achieve uh, big, you know, accomplishments. Uh, the sport, every every single sport is like moving forward. Facilities are getting better, infrastructures. Like the government is supporting athletes. Um, so, but the first thing is the mindset of parents. Uh, now, at least India, uh, people are seeing that okay, sports can be something. Uh, it's worth putting my child into sports yeah. Um, but yeah it's really important to look at the big picture of what a positive impact sport can have on your child so that's pehle, pehle parents kya karte the ki padhoge likhoge banoge nawa khelogo kudoge hoge kharab now i think the whole thing that mindset has changed a lot i would say a lot yeah. any other question any other question that you would like to ask each other Uh, yeah, please go. go. Yeah, not exactly a question, but I would just like to say that I picked up uh, different things from each speaker, and I would just okay. like to point these out uh, like, from like. Vasundhara. Um, currently, I'm doing my uh, bachelor's in sports management, mm -hmm. but uh, entrepreneurship is something I'm looking as an option for uh, my masters, whenever mm -hmm. that is. It might not be immediately, but um, and I am pretty much connected to the economic side as well. I enjoy that. Mm -hmm. So, things that you mentioned in your, uh, from your book and in this meeting, really uh, were helpful. Uh, for Park, I feel like one thing that really stuck out to me was that um, one less training session. And I feel like that is an important view to have as well. Um, a lot of times in swimming, it's especially um, overuse or overload injuries are. Uh, very common, and I think I have also personally experienced that. Mm -hmm. So that expression of less is more is something, at least in swimming, people are starting to realize that. Mm -hmm. So that was really cool. And with Sakshi as well, um, I like the part where you're like connected to your community, and that's something I'm passionate about. You know, uh, staying connected and giving back to my community. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> if I'm in a gen, I would definitely love to meet you and um, you know connect and collaborate sometime. So that's, yeah, that's well. all I wanted to say. I, I, I think that's something great. Sure thing, sure thing. I can be very proud of that. Okay. Any other thing? I think I'm very enjoyed it again. But yeah, any other question to each other? So I would, uh, yeah. So I would like to ask Vasundhara that how how did you get the idea and how did you get the motivation to write a complete book? I think if someone had told me in the beginning, "Kitni mehnat lagegi," I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> but it was, uh, but it happened very naturally. I actually, um, while I was studying economics, I felt like. There were people who were trying to apply concepts to relationships, but they were making uh, conclusions which were like misleading. Or uh, in popular media, mein, online blogs, mein, there's a lot of information which I feel is more, uh, you know, racy or sensationalized. So it's kind of misleading. So I just felt like I needed to respond to it with a coherent answer. I enjoyed the process. That's why I think I could do it till here. I have Once one question. You... I, have, I have one question for Vasu. So Vasu, you read all this. You know all these uh, stories, concepts. <laughs> have you have you read uh, written anything from your personal experience? Have you experienced it personally or not? I think I try it out. I think that a lot of it. This is like my manual. So when I get confused, it's very interesting. I think that I kisi aur ki book pad rahi hu to just you know some concepts get some ideas aur bahut baar jo cheeze 
in the moment aisa lagta hai confusing hai ya i'm getting overwhelmed mm-hmm. when i look at it logically it really helps me clarify so mm-hmm. lot of situations about making choices committing to certain things and giving up certain things those are difficult choices or mm-hmm. when i'm able to use a logical you know mindset just what 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 is a very clarity what, what you are saying resonates so much with me because i am also a writer and i write one column sunday column for 8 years and okay people, wow. and people ask me where from you get all these ideas and actually the thing that you said it is my will so all the <laughs> mistakes all the mistakes that i make uh, i write about them. and people like it very much because my will because it is coming from my personal experiences and i always write to motivate myself that i would correct this thing hmm. i would correct it so i actually it really <laughs> resonates with me and i think Makes most sense. of most of the writers they write out of their own blood uh, so that that's hmm. great now there is one friend who is raising his hand so let me take some outside view now uh, and just as a khulla if you can join us on the screen i'm just waiting for him to come and i hope you enjoyed the process today for of you i hope uh, it was I am sitting at home. Is I is I am audible? Yes, sir. Very much audible. I am sitting at home, just uh, enjoying Sunday, okay. listening to you people's. Okay. It's very nice to hear all the kids. Yeah. Congratulations, all the four per- persons. You are doing good in your field. I really appreciate. Hi, thanks. Thanks a lot. So Thank nice. You. Thank you. and shekhar also want to say something let me also add him i i like meeting with people but especially a, as a creative person i like to interact with them people and today today all of you gave some new insights let me put it this way and but it is very necessary important for us to look from the point of view of you guys because many times if we think the world is black and white we know how the world is but i think it's changing so much for example recently i did one session with a young alumni and i told him that go on facebook and see some some work that we have done earlier uh, and he said sir i am not on facebook and i said you are not on facebook he said aajkal kon hota hai facebook and suddenly i realized no the world has changed so much yeah the whole new generation is on instagram and or on slash and nobody on you know facebook maybe facebook is just for people who think they are young but they are old is it so shikari is not uh, connecting with us right now. so friends uh, let us summarize it great session great session i am very happy to be with you guys in the same screen today some day i can tell the world look i was there with path sachi vasu and abhit in the same script like uh, i did some work with uh, mr amitabh bachchan and very often i tell them that oh look i was sitting in his green room and i chatted with him and things like that but again that's an old story i want you guys to do that you guys to shine out there in the world and give me an opportunity to say hey apun ne unke sath the apun ne unke sath baat ki hai 
and I think all of you have that potential. So go make it big and make us all more more proud. But on that note, I would want to add one more thing. Friends, हमारे जितने भी दोस्त जेसुआइट सुन रहे हैं, आज हमारे सामने चार चमकते हुए सितारे हैं. But I believe जेसु की इस दुनिया में बहुत सारे सितारे हैं. बहुत सारे हमारे जेसुआइट्स हैं जिनके बच्चे बहुत टैलेंटेड हैं. And for the next seven days, I request you, I invite you. जेसु संवाद के व्हाट्सएप पेज पर व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप पर अपने बच्चों के बारे में बताइए कि वो क्या कर रहे हैं और वो कितना अच्छा कर रहे हैं सो देट वी कैन डू मोर से चमकते सितारे आपको पितारे चमकते सितारे सो थैंक यू सो मच पार्थ Sakshi, Vasu, and Advet, and thanks to your fathers, your mothers, who you. who are who are part of this journey, who must be with you all the time. थोड़ा झेल रहे होंगे, थोड़ा थोड़ी मेहनत कर रहे होंगे, थोड़े इंस्पायर हो रहे होंगे. So a big salute to all of them too. And with that, with your permission, I would like to pause it here. हम कभी भी खत्म नहीं करते हमेशा पॉज करते हैं क्योंकि कन्वर्सेशन में चलते रहते हैं एंड एंड आई होप टू स्पीक टू यू अगेन अगेन डिफरेंट फोरम्स और ऑन फोन और ऑन ईमेल एंड आई वुड लाइक टू शेयर योर कॉन्टेक्ट विद अदर पीपल हु वुड लाइक टू कॉन्टेक्ट यू एंड टॉक टू यू सो विदाउट एनी विदाउट एनी फॉर्मेलिटी आप में से कौन लोग ओपन है कम्युनिकेशन करने के लिए हाथ उठाइए अगर आप ओपन नहीं है दैट्स नॉट अ प्रॉब्लम आर यू श्योर आर यू श्योर ओके ग्रेट देन सो दैसो कम्युनिटी विल कनेक्ट विद यू एंड थैंक यू दोस्तों इसी के साथ हम ये यहाँ पर हम एक पॉज लेते हैं और फिर मिलेंगे फिर मिलेंगे आप सबको बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं कि आप जिंदगी में आगे जाए जिंदगी में कुछ बड़ा काम करें जितना हमने सोचा ना हो उससे बड़ा काम करते हुए हमें दिखाए हमको इंस्पायर करें थैंक यू दोस्तों गुड नाइट शब्बा के जय हिंद थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू